Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to Honest Trailer Commentaries for the always relevant film, Hancock. How did you <laughs> pick this one before we go any further? Where did this come from? We had an empty week. I've never seen Hancock. <laughs> okay. So this you know, I'm personal... just using it to fill in gaps in my yeah. in my personal uh, movie yeah. knowledge at this point. Um, you are a Peter Berg completist. So I am, I yes. <laughs> I love anything filmed uncomfortably close and slightly shaky. Um, I'm here with Lon Danielle. Uh, I'm a little sick, if you can't tell by my voice and the fact that I'm sleeping in the office because I cough all night. Uh, so oh. let's hope, let's let's get through this uh, as best we can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's oh. manage this. Let's manage this, Hancock, folks. folks. Folks, he's a superhero, but man, is he grumpy not, about not, it? He's he's a uh, he's powerful, but he's yeah. not. I I at the, I don't know if I would classify him as a superhero. Um, so uh, my, my first impression on seeing this, I'd heard some things about it. Um, it was refreshing to watch a superhero movie like this in the context of what superhero movies have become, mm. but it was still a bad movie. Mm. Um, it was, it, it didn't, fa- it wasn't bad in the way that superhero films are currently bad. Um, right. but it it's was bad in its own new, which way. is great. In hey, I love to see way. new bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I actually think that like this construed as a as a comedy between like uh a whole superhero and like the pr guy or pr firm like trying to rehab his image like that's the gem of an idea that you can generate a lot of funny situations out of but it just doesn't stick with that very well or very long and it just goes completely off the rails uh in in ways that we will get into shortly what what do you guys think of hancock yeah, no, I agree. I think that you stick with that first part and then you leave all of the weird uh, mythologizing and, and the, the weird like uh, eternalizing um, uh, 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 that other movie that Charlize Theron was in. Old like, Guard, yeah. The Old Guard. Yeah, you just leave all that stuff out of it uh, and then just, yeah, make it like, hey, I'm like a wacky, drunken, super powered dude who breaks stuff and now I'm going to try to like be a better person. And I think that that's enough. It's crazy. Like, this movie's <laughs> crazy. And it starts off being a perfectly reasonable movie. Maybe not my favorite, yeah. but, like, a reasonable setup for a movie. Like, it, they, we've got this sort of basic, easy-to-grok scenario of this desperate PR guy, this guy who's got powers, but he's bad at being a superhero. They're going to work together to, like, sell and it, it, it's almost like a lot of mm, the kinds of stories that we have today that are like meta takes on the super like you could see this fitting into like a the boys universe where it's kind right. of a cynical take on what if superhero mythology and fantasy but in an, a grounded r crummy world instead of like the marvel universe all that i think works did and, you mean r like o-u-r or r crumb you poor no, no not our uh, crop not mr natural i mean our <laughs> i mean the real universe as things uh, actually you exist. just took away a dream of thick ladies from yeah jason yeah, like riding just, piggyback on a, on a is just saving. he's got one over each shoulder and we just see butts there's just like <laughs> huge women's butts that he's saving. yeah if you guys don't know our crop <laughs> they, they will big large bottomed women anyway <laughs> don't google it on your work computer don't google it at work yeah uh right so but then like I, I don't know. Personally, I feel like it might be a screenwriting thing. Like, like if the screenwriter had that idea, and Vince Gilligan, the Breaking Bad guy, wrote the first. So yeah, he turned this into ever? like a into a movie that would be made. I, I did a little research into it. The, the original screenwriter um, created a incredibly dark story that was really focused on how uh, this dark Superman couldn't have sex or it would kill his partner. Like that was the, the, it was called He Comes Tonight or He Came Tonight or something like that. And that was the thrust of the script. (laughs) Um, Which is also Kevin Smith's weird hang up in Mallrats. That's also the thing that Jason Lee is obsessed with. So he turned that into like a hard R script. And then (laughs) they they brought in Vince Gilligan, who was at that time, like the X-Files and the the Lone Gunman and stuff. Like, you're a a professional. Like, turn this into, (laughs) work with Will Smith. And right. do like 20 drafts to finally yeah. get it to a place where, where he'll be in the movie. And I can't I get, believe they were actually going to make Man of Steel Woman of Tissue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, you've That's got amazing. this, like, I feel like there's this element of it where, okay, so he's working with Jason Bateman, who's this, you know, play basically Michael Bluth, playing like a, like a Michael Bluth type. And 
And and the the hook I feel like on some level was oh, and then the reveal is that Michael Bluth's wife used is a hero, and I feel like that is what led them astray. Like that yeah. feels like it's going to be a good twist, but it's too much and it's too weird, and it takes the story down this rabbit hole that it never comes back from. And that stuff is so it's so confusing. So I like, feel like yeah, they, and then yeah, it becomes they, like he was like. And then they try to make it about like racism. And I'm like, no, not this movie. You did not. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no, yeah. Not this so movie. layered and complicated and confusing. You don't have the like, weird fart jokes and burp jokes. And then you and then suddenly it's supposed to be like, ah, but race relations in the 20s. No, no. Yeah, no. I, I think you could have kept it. You could have kept the reveal in it. Like she's super too, but then kept it like a sexy, raunchy comedy farce movie where, but they take it into a like life uh, era long romance that these two have had and all these rules about where their powers go and come from and why yeah. they can't be together. Like it just keep it, it, stay, it stay in the lane, stay in it the lane. Make, it ends up not making any sense. Yeah. You're just like, wait, so they, they're, they're fated to be together, but they can't be next to each other. They keep separating and cut like what? And she's I mean, over it because, but this time he has amnesia and she, it's stupid. So let, let's so watch a trailer. <laughs> let's yeah. watch the honest trailer and start and stop. Cause there's, there's a bunch, uh, <laughs> hit it. I can't believe all these people asked for it. <laughs> I mean, this is 10 years of requests. <laughs> From Peter Berg, director of three separate films about Mark Wahlberg fighting to stop an American tragedy. Though maybe that was more Mark's idea. Comes a comedy. It's a video I've always wanted to do, but didn't haven't felt like doing the deep research required is uh, when celebrities think that they have become their characters in oh, real life. My God. <laughs> Um, the top two stories would definitely be Mark Wahlberg saying he would have stopped 9-11, that there would be a lot of blood and it wouldn't be his and that plane would have landed safely, um, yeah. which is what he said in an interview. And then um, when Angelina Jolie offered to like honeypot herself to catch Coney. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's Tom like, Cruise I will be about... a super spy. <laughs> yes. Didn't Tom Cruise once talk about how he could save a bunch of people in like a car crash? Yeah, well, he could, he could do that with his mind. Yeah, he said. Yeah, Tom Cruise said that when he drives by and he sees there's an accident on the side of the road, he feels like he has to stop because he's the only one. He like no that's one right. else could save those people but him. Yeah, ironically, uh, only he's Werner Hertz, Werner Herzog is the only person who can actually save yeah, you from a right. car crash. You... <laughs> he's on, on the record as <laughs> presumably on his way to WrestleMania. Yeah, amazing. Uh, look that one up after our crumb. All right, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> that dares to imagine if Will Smith was an emotionally fragile celebrity who hit people for teasing him. Oh, wow! Yes. Hancock. Send pause. him to prison. Yeah, Return what, what, to 2008. So pause. Um, what's, now you're a Will Smith PR person. Um, what, is, what is your prescription for him on like his next project? To win back uh, America's hearts post slap because it wouldn't be a movie like Hank or do you do a heel turn and do a movie like Hancock too or something like that? Well, he's got one Emancipation, but Emancipation that was that was in the works before the right. Oscars and like so so he's got to what's his what's pick his next project like just generally. Uh, I think you got to go back to his roots. It's got to be something where it's him being wacky with a sidekick. There's a rap. Like you got to get back to what the kid, what what made the kids laugh. You know? Okay, I, mean, I would say literally, <clears throat> everybody hated Men in Black, the Hemsworth files. Yeah, just go, just go do back. that. Yeah. Just just get get Tommy Lee back and one more one more go around. I think that's what that's what brings the folks back is forget Independence Day resurgence never happened. It's oh forget <laughs> it. it. That was a that was that's alternate. It's an alternate universe, and you get you get Will and uh, Jeff Goldblum back. Yep. there you go. That's what. Okay. I mean, I talked myself into it uh, as I was saying it. I think you should do, embrace the heel and just be like, yeah, Hancock. I mean, why would they not make Hancock too? I feel like people would show up for that. <laughs> people would uh, show up out of morbid curiosity. This movie was well, insanely nowadays. successful. That was part yeah. of the reason I picked it is like this almost grossed uh, over half a billion dollars. Like this was a huge movie. Yeah. Mid-aughts, Will Smith, there, there really isn't, I guess you could say like, like Tom Cruise, although it's still kind of tied to the franchise like tom cruise as maverick brought people out but in the mid-aughts will smith could could pack a theater just by being will it didn't matter what the movie was like we yeah kinda he took us into going to go see happiness right yeah <laughs> like like people are you know whenever like a like quentin tarantino just 
just brought this up in an interview and people like piled onto him like he was crapping on present day movie stars and he's not it's like what brings people out today is like brands and ip and like that's just the selling point that's how we sell movies and in 2004 2005 whenever this was 2006 uh you could just sell a movie basically like it's a superhero story and will smith is the superhero and people were like i'm in okay yeah, i'm going yeah 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 um how weird would it be if, pe if people like saw movies based on the screenwriter? Would that be just, would that just be insane? That's just, that's just too weird. <laughs> never, right? never, never going to really happen. Been a thing. Never not been like, a thing. Not really like a little bit maybe, but no, not really. Yeah. And I guess yeah. it doesn't matter these days because there's actually 20 writers on every movie. There's just only like yeah, they're all one to four people with, so with names on like them. Yeah. Paragraphs of the yeah. All right, let's keep going. Return to 2008, a simpler time for the movie business, when Marvel had just put out a low-budget take on one of its B-tier characters, and asshole Superman was an idea for a story, not a whole genre. In this big-budget studio film that doesn't cater to international audiences. Oh, well, now he's big and angry, huh? Big and angry now. Or women. I can smell that liquor on your breath. I've been drinking, or children. Why do you have an eagle on your head? Uh, this guy's like a little talking machine, huh? How about you, Thickness? Goggles? Oh, oh, stop crying, oh, punk ass. Go ahead. Would you want a cookie? Tell on my face. Uh, uh, pause. So that that's what I mean, I think, by refreshing but still bad. Because I like that it... I mean, even though it was PG-13, this clearly wanted to be an R-rated movie. Yeah. And wanted to basically be... I, I don't think that they were trying to appeal to everybody. <laughs> and I don't think that they were trying to um, continue a, a, a multi-arc franchise story, although the ending does add a lot at the all at once. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, it was an original character uh, and it had the comedy of its time, which doesn't hold up as much, uh, kind yeah. of like hangover style. I was comedy. just about to say, yeah, it's definitely in that <laughs> hangover vein. It feels like it's like, let's c combine like hangover style stuff with that uh, there's a there's a type of comedy where like in lieu of humorous setups or jokes or whatever it just kind of falls into this like like characters insulting one another and yeah. the joke is all like oh they're all mean and they all hate each other and they're all kind of constantly like withering one-liners at one another's expense and a lot of it even just becomes like you idiot you jerk like grumpy <laughs> old men is always the one i think of where there are whole scenes where there's no jokes it's literally just those two guys <laughs> trading barbs and that's like that's this sensibility like like this movie finds the idea of people insulting one another funny and so right. there are whole scenes just dedicated to that and like i feel like a little bit more wit and cleverness about he's an unconventional superhero who's trying his best but isn't good at it could have been fodder for better jokes yeah yeah mm -hmm. agreed um so yeah fun setup uh kind of kind of wacky execution um it just disappoint yeah i mean like instead of every like some jokes being well then he talks crap to the kid okay fine okay <laughs> but like you you hope you'd hope they'd mix it up a little yeah okay right, keep going Meet Hancock, a superhero cursed to live inside his own CinemaSins video. Look at the train! Why didn't you just go straight up in the air with the car? You think you're stuck in here? He's got Superman's powers, but instead of Clark Kent's personality, he's a drunk, lecherous bum, and his kryptonite is white women. The further away you get from me, the better you're gonna feel. You'll start getting your powers back. Working to save Hancock's image is Ray, a PR guy with a big idea for corporate America. Your new TB drug, Mycodin, we would like for you to give that product away for free. When that so obvious... <laughs> that, that thing... I... I... <sighs> That character is one of the dumber human beings in, in film. Um, his whole shtick of like, I've created this thing. I've invited every pharmaceutical CEO, I guess, in Los Angeles to this big <laughs> meeting. They don't know what it's about ahead of time. I'm going to. Yeah, they're I'm, right. The <laughs> idea that you could go get a, an interview at like Merck and you'd like get the entire board and you're just some guy. Like, yeah. let me pitch you my idea. I've not pitched it to anyone else before. I got all of it. Like, that, that's not how any of this works. We put a big heart on it, and then they give away their drugs for free. 
and it's just i guess it's just an image thing like that then question marks I, it really feels like, like the business subplot of this movie was written by like an eight-year-old like it is like <laughs> every character's are, suits are like we should do a business i have a briefcase yeah. buy the stocks you, you know, know like, what you know what a pharmacy uh had pharmaceutical companies don't care about at all their image <laughs> not yep. even a also, little they really don't like, care but this exists already like he didn't invent the idea of like a corporation being like corporations are already very charitable there's a whole industry of companies doing pr things and giving money away to look generous and like i don't they, they, they look at him like he's pitching something crazy. Like 2008, this was a very ordinary, they'd have a whole division of people yeah, whose say, job yeah. it was to invest in charitable things like that. Yeah, he this. seemed like kind of like a, like a freelance guy that like he's doing this on his own. It's so <laughs> stupid. And it's like, honestly, it's not like, I don't, Vince, Vince Gilligan is a brilliant, like, I don't want to sound like I'm talking smack. Like he's, he's much better at this than me. So I don't, I'm not even trying to like tell him what his business. But like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like it would be that hard to give him a more clever thing to pitch. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is just, it, it feels like an artifact of, of, and I did read this, that they did 20 plus drafts with Will Smith yeah. and kept uh, tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And yeah. there's just, the tones just never got smoothed out because it's so many different takes on this all, all struggling to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a 4 a.m. Like, oh, all right, it's the hard thing. We'll just, we'll just <laughs> yeah. put the hard thing in. I'm done. I got to go to sleep. You yeah. know, like that, that, that's what this feels. Like. Yeah. All right. Keep going. If he doesn't work, he'll try to rehab Hancock's image instead. Maybe I can't change the world, but I can change this guy's life. With one weird trick that lawyers hate, go to jail. People take you for granted, you know? The public will be clamoring for you. And this laugh em up jaunt through America's prison system that just kind of ends because the movie has nowhere to go but up its own ass. prepare for yeah, a third pause. Act. <laughs> 2008 baby yeah the prison stuff was just first of all it's not not great and also he has super basketball powers <laughs> that was pretty funny um but they he's like dude perfect uh superman <laughs> they he's just sitting no, there the dude perfect have superpowers you didn't know that oh that makes sense that's true. That's true. <laughs> i was uh, like you should use this to like help people and they were like no trick shots just like, trick right, shots yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey that's what you do if you're black and you get superpowers you immediately start playing basketball it's true yeah. <laughs> right first things first <laughs> yeah yep, that's um, okay. catwoman did it folks yeah, yeah. <laughs> catwoman did do it <laughs> uh lon and i did it remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's gotta find that video um yeah the, the the prison sequence is like the 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 middle chunk of the movie and it just ends when they're like there's a bank robbery hancock get out of jail and he just flies away and and yeah what does he even go to jail for i don't remember it's all the destruction of yeah. property you know he's throwing general... cars on top of the capitol records building and you know just may causing mayhem general mischief okay yeah. mm -hmm. he's like i have i have atoned i'm leaving yeah, like reckless endangerment or something you know yeah. how it works where you go to jail and then the mayor decides ah that's <laughs> enough time and then they get on the horn with the yeah. warden and you're yeah free. that's how the criminal justice works. and like i don't really care except the movie kind of invites this because it is like oh this is a superhero in the real world story like the military or the government or they no one ever got involved or like no one's tried to kind of contain or contact this guy before they just kind of let him let him bum around la and try to potch ass <laughs> that's walking by and then like maybe fly through a skyscraper uh they just put him in gen pop in like the county jail <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean we're just we're used to this era in these kinds of stories where right like like cinema sins and and us and like we train filmmakers to like have to think all of these things out and explain them because they know that fans are expecting that level of lore and world building and yeah 2008 was a very different time. To be, yeah, to be clear, I don't think you have to in general. I just think that this show or this movie is like, what if superheroes were real? Which invites the viewer to be like, well, right. then what would really happen? Um, yeah. Not yeah, this. It, it's, it, it, it is the tone switches very dramatically in the third act. And that invites you to start thinking about it more like a real story. But it's really like a dopey comedy. Yeah. At heart, it's a dopey comedy. And I don't think it wants you to think about any of these yeah. things on a deeper level than that. Yeah.
All right, let's go to the third act twist. Prepare for a third act twist that turns an otherwise okay comedy into a complete train wreck. As Ray's wife, Mary, is revealed to be a super being. Okay, I was flying, and I'm very strong as well. Who's also Hancock's twin lover sibling thing. Sisters don't kiss brothers the way you kissed me last night. Whose powers turn off when they're close to each other, eventually. It's never happened this fast before. And they keep reuniting to fall in love and fight battles throughout the millennia. Summer 4 BC. 1850. But now he has amnesia? You don't remember anything. So yeah, pause just to, Setting. if you haven't seen the movie in a while, or haven't seen the movie for context, all of that information is revealed in one scene, maybe two scenes, uh, all, in, the, in the final 15 minutes of the film. And am I crazy or almost any other film would give you uh, a prologue or an earlier hit, a flashback, a dream sequence, some some early tease that this is coming. Like not a reveal, but like Hancock would be having a dream and you'd see flashes of Charlize Theron or his previous life as a hero or him yeah. in ancient Sumeria. And you'd be like, oh, there's a deeper level here that I'm not seeing yet. And this movie does none of that. It totally lets you just think it's gonna be this comedy. And then all of a sudden there's a monologue that's like, no, here's what's really happening. The, the, well, it the, doesn't even yeah. really get into the amnesia stuff, uh, which at least you would think they would tease a little bit of that where it's like, I don't really remember anything like why, yeah, like, I don't, like before any of that happens. And then it's like, oh, there's going to be like a mysterious past. Like we wouldn't even like, the dream sequence stuff would be like great for foreshadowing, but even just something where it's like, I don't really remember my past. I don't like, it, you know, it has nothing to do with me. It would be like, okay, so we're going to, find out right. something about him. It's like that's one of the more basic, exactly. It's one of the basic screenwriting things. You signpost, you let people know like there's a reveal yeah. coming The, the stupid clue, they, they have a stupid clue that they dropped though, which is that he has movie tickets to Frankenstein in his pocket. That's the right. thing that they, uh, multiple times he's like, hmm. And it, I guess they were they were seeing that movie on the the most recent time he got his brains beat out. I mean, I still don't full. Yeah, like they were they they've been hanging out long enough to start to lose their powers, and then he got shot in the head, and she got back in enough time to like save him, but yeah. the injury messed up Gave his him brain. Amnesia. Right, Gave and then him he amnesia. was well, and then he like left, and she was like, "You're a dick. Why didn't you come back for me?" And he was like, "I got racist." gunned down so i don't remember things <laughs> and, and she, yeah so okay hold, let's let's tease this out <laughs> it's so <laughs> confusing and weird it's like why not just make it easy well like, let's just start with let's just do the the final him getting shot in miami right that this is like yeah. we'll start there so it's 80 years in the past right. it's it's the i can't do math the uh 30s? 80, 80 years my 30s sure yeah um he, so they're seeing Frankenstein. Right. That he gets fits. shot uh, out of, because racism. He he has uh, uh, amnesia. She she I guess just like doesn't check up on him at the hospital. Well, right. This is the problem. Is that <laughs> the, the theoretically she he gets amnesia and then she's like, oh, this is my chance. I can get away. <laughs> well, you won't remember me. I could go start a new life and be on my own, which is so awful. It's really yeah. cool. Oh, no. no, she gets away because they are already uh, like losing their powers and that's yeah, why he's like, injured. Leave him a note, so she let him know away. who he is. <laughs> well, cause she doesn't know he has amnesia. She doesn't know he has amnesia, right. right. Yeah. Um, she, so she abandons him on his death. She abandons yeah. him on his so, death. So she bed. just abandons him on his yeah. death. Yeah. yeah. Like we'll, we'll see in the next lifetime. Um, but he doesn't show it's, but it's, Curious because it's like it's either is the problem that he doesn't show up to find her, or is the problem that she's like I'm just over this. I can't. I can't take that. They it's keep like, shooting oh, my husband. No, I, the, I the hate problem, this. The problem is that he doesn't show up because that's why she's all like cranky and pissy throughout the movie with him, and because mm. they have that scene and she's like I can't believe that you would be here and like I can't believe like all the stuff and he's like Lady I have no idea what you're talking about and like that's right. when the big reveal happens and that's when they get into the the hot. I feel like it's kind of on her though to like check in after he got shot in the head to just be like how how you doing 
You good? At least a phone call to the <laughs> hospital. Call. Yeah, a little if flyby. If you don't want to be like in close like, proximity because of the power thing, you can do long distance and like yeah. call the hospital. He's on TV every day in LA, like <laughs> crashing into buildings. He's not like, oh, he forgot how to fly. I should at least tell him right. like how to fly. So instead, I guess she waits a, a, a few decades and then is like, Jason Bateman, he can be like my my dog husband. Um, and I can just like... Well, it's also unclear how she's planning on navigating that. Like in another 10 years, he's going to notice that she's not like aging. aging I don't know. All. Have you seen her recently? Yeah, right. I it's, mean... It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't Yeah, we're right. We're now right about the time where he'd be like... Yeah. Um, something's weird here. Uh, if you could explain that away with, hey, honey, I'm going to go get refreshed. I'll be back in two weeks. No, I mean, it's like the thing in every immortal movie. Like, you can't, you can't, you got to move on. Every every 40 years, you got to move on, you know? Mm, yeah. All right, People let's move on lives. ourselves. Let's keep going. This movie sucks. Setting up the epic finale showdown between two godlike immortals and three goons in a hospital hallway. <laughs> Big finale. Do you think that the budget ran out or they just hadn't invented the third act sky beam yet? A sunny. <laughs> Stay down. So enjoy a film that can't quite decide what it is. A raunchy, violent comedy. Watch out! <laughs> the original script. About two immortal lovers separated by fate. You two are fated to be together? Or a salute to timely local news broadcasts. Notoriously publicity shy Hancock. Felony destruction of property. I ask my fellow Angelinos for their patience and understanding. Meanwhile, crime is still on the rise. The story is confirmed that the prisoner uprising. We are waiting for the latest news. In this blockbuster, they try to create an original anti hero that audiences love from scratch. But you can't expect to get everything right the first time. Right, Vince? Eh, he'll figure out eventually. Say my name. Yeah, pause. So Vince left this movie to to do Breaking Bad. Yeah. He was like, I'm done. One Will right Smith, I can't take that. another. I, I'm I'm turning in this uh uh this final draft and I quit. Um, okay, then that makes everything make way more sense. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, he, it does. <laughs> and Peter Berg, I was reading some interview with Peter Berg, like he's like, I guess it turned out okay, but like I was I was cussing him out courtside at the Laker game, which is just such an awful Hollywood director thing to brag about. But you know what? It turned out to be Breaking Bad. So I guess he was right in the end. Um, yeah, cool, dude. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's... um. That, we were I, doing meth together and then Vince <laughs> has this great idea. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it is fascinating, though, that um, Vince Gilligan was just like a... Was like a Worker, work for hire TV guy for for many decades. Um, just shows, goes to show you, just need your reps. Just need your reps. Well, I, I I do think. I mean, part of what makes Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul so good is that they're so tightly constructed, and mm. it comes from he's got decades of experience churning out other people's you know scripts for other people's shows. He just got all that stuff became second nature, so he could focus on the specifics of this world and the Albuquerque verse, but the structure, how to format, how to build tension, that's all automatic from decades of doing it, you know, mm -hmm. like being a veteran yeah. on that level really does pay off. I yeah. I mean, when you've gone through, when you're on draft 22 of Hancock, you're like, well, I now, now I know what not to do. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, get, I get how the mechanics of story work because I've seen <laughs> Hancock up close. Yeah. All right. Keep going. There's Starring a sad boys for life. The old guard. I do love your father, but he's more like a pet to me. What is this accent? All of them? I want you to break into the vault. You'll find three quarter ton pilots of small bills inside. Thirty million dollars. And how <laughs> conservative? From, he's from I'm the, thinking he's Alabama, from New Orleans. <laughs> Al Alabama, part of England. I was going to say Dutch Cajun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, feels, it feels like if you move the American South into the South of England and sort of yeah. merge, maybe you'd get something like that. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of like the bad guys in that Hulk and Thor movie. <laughs> right. Like, oh yeah, I guarantee yeah. we're going to catch that Hulk. <laughs> um, and also fascinating, um, this if you caught in one of the local news broadcasts, he, his origin story is he was a Stanford professor who, who yeah. created a a group of uh, terrorists out of his grad students for like the environment or something. Is it every scene we see of that character in the movie? He is a completely normal. He's just a tough guy prisoner. Like there, mm. and it's not Eddie Marsan mm -hmm. is the actor, and he's 
terrific. He could have played whatever you gave him. But they just have him be like, he's just a tough prisoner guy. We only find out about his fascinating hook and backstory from the news. <laughs> yeah. That's it. In person, he's just a guy. It's like the opposite of how to write a character. The news is so helpful. Local news um, yeah. in, in movies and in real life, because how else would I know who's dead in a car accident near me? That's yeah. it's really crucial. Thank you, KTLA. Um, all right. I Keep follow going. you on Twitter. <laughs> Conservatives view Disney movies. On <laughs> red. Norwegian. <laughs> I was legend. Dude, no one signed up for your little charity symbol. Now you're just the guy who defaced the moon. I get in trouble for that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, put a heart on the moon for your failed brand that didn't work. Yeah. Nobody knows what it looks like. You, you just all of a sudden there's the the, the new the local news the next day is going to be like local idiot <laughs> Jason <laughs> yeah, yeah, the moron to face his moon. Moron to face his moon. <laughs> Impossible to undo. Uh, thanks. Yeah, you tagged the moon, weirdo. Like, what do you think? <laughs> tag the moon. Um, hack the planet. Tag the moon. <laughs> Uh, all right, I don't know if we have any deleted scenes, but let's check those out if we do. Starring Dim, <laughs> The Pursuit of Sloppiness, The Suicidal Squad, The Anti-Wife Equation, Momster, Dumb Draper, IPR Freely, mm. Hobo with a Bateman. That's good. One Slap Man. <laughs> Has at least their own really been typecast as a world-weary immortal soldier? That is so badass. Yep. She's yeah. got a scene in this where they're walking along Hollywood Boulevard and, and she's like, I, we saved people for thousands of years. I'm so excited. She's like bringing up all the specific battles they fought or whatever. There's the exact same scene in the old guard she's had. Yep. She's played that scene twice. Like, <laughs> like I'm so exhausted from fighting at Constantinople. Charlize Theron's <laughs> mass to deliver that scene in two different films. That's incredible. What and she's probably going to wind up having to do it again in the next time. Yeah, almost definitely, because yep. there's going to be an old guard too. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what a what a career when you when you when that's what you inspire people is like oh yeah she seems like somebody who's been fighting battles since uh, ancient Rome yeah yeah I wanted to have the scene with uh, with Hancock with the the they might be giants Istanbul was Constantinople <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like oh you know this baklava tastes like it's from the northern Levant <laughs> <laughs> I still can't get over that scene that that's amazing yeah. hey this is our I... hobby we just uh, we just. Uh, <laughs> We just do uh, like Gordon Ramsay challenges and try to figure out where baklava is from. But like, if you're Charlize Theron, that's what you bring that's out. That's what of, you right? do. You walk into yeah. a room, people are like, she's been here for 4,000 Forever. years. Just kicking <laughs> ass, yeah. It's nobody's business but the Turks. <laughs> <Cuck>. um, all right, <laughs> let's do that. Let's do some live chat questions. Will Smith Thanks. is Triangle Man. <laughs> oh my god that's different the universe i want to see the triangle yeah. man universe it's different they might be different. universe man particle man <laughs> yeah netflix just bought it damn um all right adam halbert asks uh why did the trend of an unlikable superman become so popular since this movie came out what is the well, uh, what is the never-ending appeal of a of a grim dark superman it's because superman is is so iconic and that story is entirely pivoted on he's he's worthy you know like he's then, a boy scout yeah Right, like Superman is the, thank goodness Superman is the guy who got those powers and he's on our side and he kick stands for truth and justice. So it's sort of, you know, it lends itself to like, oh, but what would the flip be? What would we do if there was a nemesis uh, with Superman's power? Yeah, yeah, um, it, 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 it branches it off into a more adult zone, but like a, sometimes a more juvenile place yeah. too. Um, where, uh, but but I think that it's been done Edginess. well. Yeah. I mean, it's been obviously um, Invincible's really good, and um, you know, Doctor Manhattan from from uh, Watchmen is a good good take on that. But uh, yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be uh, horrible and creepy, um, and and that's fun to look at. I mean, uh, it's kind of one of the essential, you know, like comic book themes is yeah. it's the spider-man theme too it's with great power comes great responsibility and like you know given these you know given these tools to wield it's important what kind of person is behind them yeah mm -hmm. 
Uh, Luis Valenzuela says, uh, I think in one draft of Hancock, they were supposed to be Zeus and Hera, which is why Hancock has a lot of eagle imagery. That's yeah. true. They, they never, they bring up the eagle, but we will have to wait for Hancock too to get the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that makes perfect sense is the explanation. Is it's just, it's their draft group, 17. They were, they were actually. Their mythology Greek avatars. And yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, the implica- there is still the implication that like ancient humans may have viewed them as God. I think there's a line of dialogue or something about that, how they were worshipped in earlier generations or something. So that's like the, what, what survived of that idea. Yeah. Uh, Matan Valensky says, uh, how did, uh, nobody talks about uh, how Vince did X-Files. Well, we talked about it briefly. Uh, do you want to see him do an original sci-fi film? Should he do Doctor Who? What would you like to see next from Vince? Do you want to see him stay in the in the Breaking bad or or whatever's next? I'd love to see him do something genre, but I would want him to see, I, I don't want him to be brought into someone else's IP. I want to see him do his own thing. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm just checking to see if he's actually got anything in production. That's I don't think coming. I, I I think he does. It's he's got something with Ray Seahorn, but it's not a legal show, and it's not a follow up to Better Call Saul. Like they're they're going to do a new show together. Mm. I think they even said there is a sci fi element to it. We don't know what the plot is yet, but it's it's not Albuquerque verse. We're we're, we're leaving okay. we're leaving the Breaking Bad verse <laughs> behind. Yeah, the ABQ or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's we're not, we're, no, no more. Well, I mean, it is a shame in that I love that, and I would, I would say, like, if one day he wants to go back and expand that world again, like, let's do the Todd show. But uh, yeah. for now, I, 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 I am excited about seeing him get to spread his wings a little and try something new. Yeah. Uh, Evan J. Pretzer with a, with a bunch of questions. Um, uh, did Spencer get in trouble with his family? No, I'm sick. Uh, that's why I'm sleeping in another room because I uh, cough all the time now. Gilbert's um, in the doghouse, yeah. folks. <laughs> Can't be <laughs> sick in the Gilbert ah, household. Like yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. Yes. Um, his wife this- found out he's got superpowers. <laughs> and so. In the spirit of Giving Tuesday, what charities would you encourage people to give to? It is Giving Tuesday. Do we have any, any, any uh, charities we like? Ooh. Uh, sure. I'm I, sure I, I do. I mean, yeah, what like I, I used to do, I work for, I work for a channel called What's Trending. We used to do a lot of benefits for the Trevor Project. That's a great, mm, that's uh, a good one. That is a great organization that helps out uh, teens, LGBTQ teens that need counseling and services. So, uh, and homeless too, I think they've got shelters. Uh, that, that might be something else I'm thinking of. Anyway, that's a great one. Nice. That's a good one. Uh, Rain. Rain is a charity that I'm really sure, into. Sure. Um, Rain is uh, do do do. Uh, well, I won't because one of the words is banned. But it's basically to help with people. It's a, a anti um, the nation's largest anti um, essay. You know what that means. Um, organization. Um, and so it helps with victims and it helps yeah. uh, uh, with victims advocacy. Uh, it's spelled R A I N N. Um, and that's an organization that I've done some work for that I like. Oh, and then always, as per usual, Planned Parenthood. Yeah, nice. All good stuff. Um, I did. Uh, 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 Why you think of that? Pro- the Project other one Angel. Was- oh, Project okay. Angel Food here in LA is where I volunteer when when we go do it, and we make a lot of meals for people who are homebound, and and they get delivered, and and it's it's very sweet and and straightforward. And uh, if you're looking for a fun uh, volunteer opportunity, you get to just go make like a hundred dinners at once. Like you get to work in like a real, it's not the bear, but it is a real big professional <laughs> kitchen. And, I'm going to uh, yell behind the corner. Yeah, you have to yell anyway. behind and corner. Exactly. Yes. So the other we, one I was thinking of, by the way, that. there's Trevor project, which is the helpline for, for teens in crisis. And then there's covenant house, which is uh, for homeless mm. youth. Uh, that's like shelters and places they can go. Uh, both great, both d- different organizations that I got mixed up, both mm. terrific. And another good one, if you want to volunteer and you're in LA, is Snacks and Solidarity, which is another one where like they put together meals for people. Nice. And LA Food Bank. There's a lot of yeah. stuff in LA. Yeah, just give some. Just, local food bank. Yeah. Give. Give. That's an order. Uh, it's Giving Tuesday. Do it. Uh, we'll end with it's this. Giving uh, it's Giving Tuesday. It's Giving Tuesday. It's Giving Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll end with this because this is just more of an interesting uh, fact that I didn't know. Um, James Brophy says, uh, John Favreau confirmed that Hancock was the reason they removed the specific alcoholism story and Olivia right. Munn, who was in all of those scenes from Iron Man 2. I heard about this, yes. Wow. Oh. I guess this was a big enough movie that Favreau was like, well, we can't do the Hancock thing. 
<laughs> That's been done. It's been done. Tony Stark can't do something that Hancock's done. That yeah. people be confused. <laughs> They'd say, "Why is why is Hancock doing uh, drinking?" Oh wait, it's Tony Stark. Um, wow, that's 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 amazing. Um, and gosh. you know what? Honestly, like I didn't. Everyone acts like the the Iron Man like alcoholism thing was like this huge deal that was like it's like I think it lasted you know a couple of issues and then Tony was like I got to get my stuff together. It wasn't yeah. like it's just yeah, one of the more well known that ones. demon in yeah. a bottle arc is like yeah. it's one very memorable Iron Man arc. It's not like the whole character. I think they yeah, it's like when up. it's like when Hank uh, when Hank Pym slaps his wife once and everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, that's like it's it's not good. But yeah, it is right. like it's one of those ones where it's like that was like one thing, and the comics basically were like oh, we're it also it got. Out. It was because like when when Robert Downey Jr. first got cast as the character yeah. and that was the pop culture thing with Robert Downey yeah. Jr. was he was this troubled guy who was getting over these addiction problems. And so I think the media kind of latched onto that yeah. in a in an over the top way. The thing was, is that Iron Man 2, though, could have really used that instead of what they went with, which was like he has battery poisoning. Which is yeah, just... <laughs> his, 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 his arc yeah. reactor is slowly no, killing him. Not a good, not well, a good Well, he did have that one period, like when he uh, got drunk at that like presentation and didn't he like pee in his suit? He something? did, but it was just a funny, it was like the only funny part of the movie. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. and it's like he's depressed because his arc reactor is killing him, not because yeah. he's an alcoholic. He swallowed too many batteries. Right. Um, all right. Let, okay. Let's really end with this, and then we'll tease you with next week's. Because uh, I like this question. Pericles Dragon Ball says, "Fatal four way uh, between Hancock, Homelander, Omni Man, and Brightburn. Who comes out alive?" Omni Man. Nope. Brightburn. Jeez, I barely even remember. Omni Man. Yeah, I feel like uh, be... I feel like Hancock yeah. is not. He just he hasn't had to develop his mm-hmm. skills, his abilities on that level because he's kind of. And he's, he's got amnesia. Yeah, he doesn't remember. Well, but he's also just, he's hes extremely overpowered for his universe. You know, yeah. like there's nobody in the Hancock world to really challenge him. He's fighting like thugs, you know? Like he's yeah. fighting like three guys with guns. Like they're no match. So Omni-Man's had to like hone his skills over decades of huge epic fights. I mean, I never saw Brightburn, but I think Omni-Man, yeah, he's 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 a galaxy-wide, you know, conqueror. So I think that there's- Yeah, like really, he, yeah. he does genocide all by himself. All like, by himself. Yeah, I mean, he's taken out Kaiju Before like, breakfast, single-handed. Yeah. Like he's, it's, none of these other people have the strength of schedule he's at. <laughs> all right. Next put week- Put in the reps. <laughs> yeah, put, he's put in the reps, just like- Yeah, this. exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 10,000 hours, Malcolm Gladwell style of, of punching. I'm excited for next week. Next week's good. Uh, it's been talked about a lot, but maybe not seen enough. Um, you've made your mind a sunless space, may, yeah. I, I'd say, well, <laughs> tomorrow, next week, we'll make our mind a sunless space. <laughs> oh dear, and then, uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna have fun, uh, with that trailer. Um, uh, and by fun, I mean, I don't know what we're gonna write, it's really good crap uh but we'll see you <laughs> i then. got some thoughts I you'll have... you'll yeah you'll find out then uh on next week's episode of australia commentaries thanks for joining us i'm gonna go back back to sleep bye-bye